yeah, so like I was saying, beginner friendly exercise, we're gonna make this screwdriver. Um, we'll uh, even make it look pretty. See, I made it look pretty. I added some appearances and some materials to this, uh, to this screwdriver. So for right now, I am gonna go ahead and uh, create a new design. And on this new design, I'm gonna grab, I have a tape measure right here that'll do me just fine. My not open. Oh, we can take a little slight pause. Uh, in fact, I can even pause the recording. All right, now that everybody is up and running and we're recording again. So we are going to start making our screwdriver. Uh, I'm going to start by creating a sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create. And then I'm going to come down to create sketch. And I'm going to draw on the uh, front plane there. So that is the plane in between my Z and my X axis. Um, if there's ever any curiosity or any um, desire to choose the axis or the plane you're going to draw on very carefully, if I want, I can come up here to my navigation cube and in the top right hand corner and I can click on the word front. And then I know I'm looking right at that. I won't accidentally click on another plane. And I can choose that plane as the plane I'm going to draw on. And now I enter my sketching environment. This is familiar for, I think, everybody in class here. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and start by creating a uh, rectangle. We're going to make a two-point rectangle. And I'm going to create a rectangle that goes from my origin point here. Um, I'm imagining my uh, screwdriver as a revolved shape, mostly. So we're really only going to draw half of the screwdriver. And then we're going to twist it around. We're going to revolve it around a center point here. So I'm going to draw, start with my handle shape. My handle is four and a half, let's call it four and five eighths. Four and five eighths inches uh, in length. So it is four, and I can type in my fractions here, five eighths. And then, you know, to bounce back and forth between two different measurements, you hit the tab key. So once I can see numbers on my rectangle, I try to let go of my mouse and embrace the comfort of my keyboard. Um, and I'm going to call this an inch. It's probably 7 eighths of an inch, but I'm going to call it an inch. An inch is going to be just fine. Um, and remember, we're imagining this as a revolved shape. So there's two ways that we can do this. Either I can go, hey, um, my screwdriver is an inch, but it's a revolved shape. So I'm going to divide that inch by 2. Um, or, I guess I just typed one half. Um, so I can do an inch divided by two. Uh, or I could just choose to type in uh, half of an inch. I could do 0.5. Uh, I can do one over two. Uh, it's kind of nice here in Fusion, I believe. Even though we chose to enter one of these measurements as a fraction and one of them as a decimal, if I double click on the measurement, it remembers that I typed in that measurement as a fraction. So, uh, and if I double click on this other one, it knows that I indeed typed that in as a decimal. So even though it converts everything to a decimal for you, uh, it does remember what you typed in originally. All right, so now let's create the, um, the business end of our of our device here um, and I'm going to choose to do this uh, in a little different way here so the shaft sticks out from my screwdriver three and three quarters of an inch but I will bet you a silver dollar that uh, that this shaft is much longer than three and three quarters of an inch. 
I bet it goes inside of the screwdriver at least an inch, if not more. Um, so I am going to make a rectangle that is five inches long. That's a little bit more than an inch and a quarter that will be sticking inside of my screwdriver. Um, from my create menu, I'm going to go ahead and choose to grab that two-point rectangle tool. And I'm going to make my two-point rectangle in the wrong spot. Because I want to uh, move it into the right spot using cons some constraints and adding some dimensions. Because um, that's fun for me. I like to make you guys jump through hoops and dance around. Uh, I think I said five inches? Yeah. So I'm going to make it five inches long. And my shaft is a quarter of an inch. But again, we're, um, we're really drawing just one half of this. So half of a quarter is an eighth of an inch, uh, which is also 0.125. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just draw it as one eighth, and then I'm going to hit enter. All right, so I want to do a couple of things here. So uh, I'd like this line to exist at the same spot on my uh, z-axis this is as, as this line here. So the there's a couple of probably a couple of constraints that I could use in order to achieve that. Um, first, I could use the coincident constraint. So from our constraints menu, if we wanted to choose uh, the coincident constraint, what we could do here is we could choose the bottom point, bottom left hand corner point of my little of our shaft drawing. And then we could make it coincident to this line right down here, which is the bottom line of my rectangle for my handle. So now it is uh, it is coincident to that that line. It won't move up or down from where that line is. Uh, it'll move back and forth. We won't move up and down. We'll fix that back and forth problem in a little bit here. Uh, the other thing that we could do here, let me just get rid of that coincident constraint. Oh boy. Let me just do, there we go. Uh, the other option that we could do here is um, we could do a, a horizontal vertical. So a horizontal vertical constraint says that uh, these two items that we're going to specify are always either directly horizontal or directly vertical from each other. So the way we use this in this case is we could say, hey, I'm going to use that horizontal vertical constraint and I'm going to choose this point and I'm going to choose this point. And now those points will always be directly horizontal uh, of each other, and it kind of picks whichever one is closest. Oh, it's nice being over constrained already. Uh, well, so if you added uh, both of those constraints, uh, you added too many constraints. I was just showing you that there are more than one way, uh, more than one way to skin a cat, as as a coworker of mine uh, says. Um, and uh, yeah, just you know, lots of options. You could pick the one that suits you the best. All right, so now we want to define a distance here. So I just kind of dragged my, my rectangle uh, inside of my other rectangle. So they're overlapping, which is indeed what we want to do here. Um, and I could say I could define this in one of two different ways. Um, I could define a distance that my shaft sticks out. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to go with. So my shaft sticks out of my handle four and, or I'm sorry, three and three quarters of an inch. So in, in order to define that distance, I can click on my create menu. 
and I can come down to sketch dimension. I'm going to create. It's also the D key on your keyboard. I'm going to create a sketch dimension, and that dimension is going to be the distance between that line and this point way out here. And then I can uh, place that dimension wherever it makes sense. So right now, what it's telling me is that um, spacing is 3.920235. It's a really weird number. Um, it's not a weird number. Numbers aren't weird. It's definitely not a round number. Even in the, even in the imperial measurement system, this would not be considered a round number. Uh, however, three and three quarters <laughs> is definitely a round number in the imperial measurement system. Uh, who knows how many how many meters that is, or uh, is that what that's what you would measure this in, right? Meters, kilometers. How many kilometers long is the screwdriver? Is that is that the, the proper metric unit? All right. Um, the metric system is impossible. I don't, I don't know how people do it. All right. I mean, base 10. That doesn't make any sense at all. I would base 12. Yeah, there you go. See, base, base 12. Base 12 for practice. Yeah, base 12, base 3 maybe. I would base 3 and a half. Okay. <laughs> no, base is pi. <laughs> yeah, ba yeah, base 3.14. That, that actually does make sense. Um, yeah, exactly. All right, so now we, we've got kind of the, uh, the meat of our, um, of our shape done here. Um, I want to add in a little, the little curve that I see at the back end of my screwdriver here. So I'm going to zoom in to that back end. And I'm going to choose to add that little curve at the back of my uh, handle with the fillet tool. So in the modify menu, fillet is the very top uh, option. And the way you use the fillet tool is, and if I just stop moving my mouse, uh, Fusion has these great tool tips. So what it's telling me here is to select the first line or arc. So I'm going to go ahead and just follow the instructions. I'm going to select the first line. Now I'm supposed to select the second line or arc, and the second line or arc is going to be this uh, adjacent line here, or this perpendicular line. And now I've got an arrow and a number, um, and if I want it to be perfectly round at the bottom, 0.5 is, is what I want to go with. Um, and I think I do want it to be perfectly round down there. A nice round screwdriver butt which is the uh, official appropriate tool name for this part of the screwdriver the, what? the butt the screwdriver butt Makes sense. yeah all right and I'm gonna hit enter hmm I was not expecting my sketch to become unconstrained. Does it have anything to do with the... No, it doesn't. Um, I guess we're going to we're gonna roll with it. Um, could I change that? Sure can, it doesn't. Uh, normally, I like to see all, I don't like to see blue lines as part of my sketch. Blue lines are unconstrained lines. Um, let me just do a little experiment. Is there a way that I can constrain this? Not really. Uh, what if I draw a line down here? Hey, all right. So that's interesting. So, um... The reason that this sketch is not fully constrained is, that's weird. I don't, it doesn't seem like I could, oh yeah, see this center point. 
here we go this center point I can click on it and I can move this center point um, because changing the position of this center point does not change my radius my radius still stays the same here but that center point can move so if we want to um, let me rephrase that we do want to fully constrain our our sketch here and um, there's a couple ways we can do that so uh, a we could choose this coincident constraint again and this is just a guess because I haven't actually tried this we can choose this coincident constraint uh, just like we made our uh, point on our screwdriver shaft coincident to the line that is the center line for our handle we could also make the center point for this this fillet here we could choose to make that coincident with our center line and indeed that, that snaps it in place um, and makes everything fully constrained uh, turns out the other way that we could do this I'm just going to do command Z a couple of times here um, is if I draw a line straight down from from the bottom from the base of my sketch here I just drew a line straight down I get a little perpendicular constraint here so this this line is fully constrained uh, this is kind of a roundabout way but I could choose to make this fillet tangent to that line so either one of those ways works um, I chose I did the tangent Oh, yeah, and again, this is just two ways to two ways to do it. If you chose to make the center point coincident on our line, uh, you don't need to add this little line down here. Um, honestly, I think the coincident constraint is probably the better. It's probably the more intuitive way to do it. Um, if I was looking at this drawing, it would be difficult for me to just figure out what that little tail was was doing. Uh, if I'm looking at somebody else's drawing, so maybe using this coincident constraint is the best way to do it. And, you know, people can always click on that little point and they can see, hey, look, there's a coincident constraint there. It's making it in making it be a certain way. All right, cool. So now let's do the little um, finger grip detail. My particular screwdriver um, has a really basic finger grip detail. Uh, it's just got a simple arc. So I'm going to grab from my create menu the three point arc tool. And I'm going to click and place the first part of my arc on that line. And then I'm going to place the next part of my arc is going to be three quarters of an inch down the way. So 0 0.75. Um, we don't actually want to click enter here with, with this arc tool. Um, is a little bit different than some of the other tools where you would place a measurement and then hit enter. Um, in, in the case of this arc tool, we're going to click to place that measurement. And now I can define the depth of my arc. And um, I don't actually know what the depth of this arc is. So it looks like it's a little bit, it looks like it's about an eighth of an inch. Could be a little bit more. Um, but I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. That looks like a decent size arc there. Now, we will notice this is a blue line. This is one of those uh, unconstrained lines here. So let's see if we can use our constraints to, to constrain this little arc here. Uh, I'm going to start by defining the distance between this point and the end of my handle, um, because that'll be a really easy thing for me to measure here. So I'm going to pull out my little measuring tape. That is an eighth of an inch. So from my create menu, 
I'm just going to come up to my sketch dimension option and I'm going to click on the end point of my little arc and then the end point of my circle or my handle grip and I'll place that measurement and now I can change it uh, to be the one-eighth of an inch that I mentioned there. Um, now my guess is the last thing that we need to do in order to really define this arc is uh, give it a radius. So um, I bet, I bet you a shiny nickel, yeah. So this is the center point for this arc. Uh, an arc always has a center point. It's just kind of floating off in the middle of nowhere. And you can see it as I move this up or down, uh, it changes the radius of my little cut there. So we need to fully constrain things. You can't just click on and have them move around. So in order to lock that um, arc into place, I'm going to add a sketch dimension. So I'll click on create, and then I'll come down to sketch dimension. And I'm just going to define the radius um, of this arc here. And uh, I'm going to make it, it's pretty close to, to 5 eighths. So I'm going to go ahead and make it 5 eighths. Yeah, that seems, that seems good. Sometimes when I'm thinking about, um, did you hit delete? So, now I got a nice fully constrained sketch here, and, um, and now I can move on. I'm going to go ahead and say finish sketch. Actually, before I finish my sketch, let's just, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I got to, I like to make my measurements easy to read here, so let me just pull these up a little bit. I got to measurement there, I got a measurement down here, I can move that radius off to the side, just make my measurements a little easy to read. You never know who else is going to have to look at your, your drawing later, uh, so it's nice to not have all of your measurements just like living on top of each other. Um, and then whoever's got to look at your drawing gets real confused. So, all right, so now I'm going to go ahead and say finish sketch. Now, as we have created a sketch, we have a sketches folder, and in that sketches folder is a sketch appropriately named or inappropriately named sketch one. Um, this is really the profile or the screwdriver profile or the handle 
uh, handle profile. Uh, literally anything is better than sketch one, so I encourage people, name your sketches, name your bodies as we go here. All right, let's do the fun part. Let's actually extrude a thing. So, I'm sorry, not extrude, revolve. We're going to revolve a thing. So I'm going to come up to my create menu here and I'm going to go ahead and choose the revolve option. So create, revolve. Um, now, if you use revolve a lot and you're like, hey, last week people were like, hey, I want to make keyboard, we want a whole class on keyboard shortcuts. Uh, I can click on the little, uh, little three dots that appear next to all any of these items as I hover over them. And I could say, hey, change keyboard shortcut. Um, and now I could say, hey, anytime I hit Shift R, Shift R is now going to be my revolve command. So if I can remember that, now I just Shift R, and I don't have to ever have to open that menu up ever again. Yeah, I said Control R. Hey, man, you, you can do Control. That's fine. Uh, I'm not in charge of your keyboard shortcuts. Um, I will say that uh, I like going in menus, especially for teaching the class. So I'll probably continue to go in the menus because people are going to set up their keyboard shortcuts differently. And uh, suddenly I'm saying, all right, everybody hit Shift R and, and your revolve doesn't work. Because, uh, you know, yours is Control R. All right. Um, so menus are a better way for me to teach the class. So I'm going to choose the, this handle shape here that I'm going to revolve and I'm going to choose an axis to revolve around I am indeed making this a new body yeah it's getting there we're moving in a screwdriver direction and I'm going to say okay uh, I've got a body that I can name here so I'm going to click and rename that body. This body is going to be our uh, handle. All right, or here, you know, better word is our grip. All right, so now let's do that again. I'm going to go ahead and click on the create menu. I'm going to come down to Revolve, and I'm going to choose, um, I'm going to hide, I'm going to hide my, my body. So here, here's why I'm going to do that. Um, you can see I, I've clicked on the my shaft here, and I've got one item selected. Um, however, because I'm, I'm going to hide this, because I have a line that bisects my shaft and my handle, uh, this, this line here bisects it, I have, to, I have to click on both of these shapes. And it's just easier to do that if you hide the visibility on your body. Um, the other way to do this would be if I had my body visibility on, I could rotate it and then maybe I could like zoom in and just kind of click on this little sliver of a thing. Um, but sometimes it's just easier to just hide the, the visibility on your and body. body. Yeah, and we're also making this a new body. Um, here's another tip too. So uh, if I select the axis that I'm going to revolve it around, if I revolve this with my grip body turned off, the visibility on my grip body is turned off, um, I won't accidentally join these things together. So it can be really easy to, as you're moving fast, um, you know, fusion, when things are touching, you can see, hey, it's defaulting to join. And you're, you're just revolving, and then you're like, all right, now I'm going to make my next sketch. Uh, and then you've accidentally joined those two bodies together. Uh, it's not really a big deal, because you can always go back in time and choose the, to not join them. But you have to figure out where they joined. Um, so a way to not accidentally do that is to hide bodies that are touching the thing that you're revolving and then you won't accidentally join those bodies together.
All right, cool. So I've got another body to name here. This body is our shaft. You damn right. Or shut your mouth. One of those. One of those two things are the appropriate words to say after the word shaft. All right. So now. Um, I think the real part of the screwdriver that makes this handle look the way it is, is, is these cutaways. So let's go ahead and make those cutaways now. Uh, I am going to choose to make those cutaways by drawing on this flat surface up here. So in addition to uh, locating drawing planes uh, using the construct menu, you can also uh, draw on any flat surface. And the advantage to drawing on a flat surface is you kind of have some built-in geometry when you, cho when you choose to draw on a flat surface. It incorporates the parts of the flat surface that directly interact with that plane, if that makes sense. So um, on this flat surface, the parts of it that interact with that plane are going to be this inner circle and this outer circle. So I'll automatically have that geometry as geometry that I can interact with when I'm creating my drawing here. So uh, it can be really convenient to draw on an existing object. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Create. I'm going to say Create a Sketch. And I'm going to choose that flat surface there which to create my sketch on. Um, I'm going to come in and I am going to I'm going to create a line. So uh, what I'd like to do is uh, I'd like to create some geometry that, that I can uh, will help me fully constrain this, this sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line straight across. Uh, in fact, here, I'm going to do it wrong. I'm going to make sure I do it bad. Um, so you can see me pop it into place after the fact. So I'm going to draw a line that uh, touches one edge of my circle and goes across to the other edge of my circle and it's going to have a length of three-eighths of an inch. So the only thing there are three, there are two constraints and I guess really technically there are three constraints for this line. So this line has a length and it has two coincident constraints. Um, I didn't give those coincident constraints to it, but it, it kind of automatically added them when I chose to click directly on those circular, the edge of that circle. So you can see if I click on any one of those points, the little constraint pops up that it kind of gave automatically. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to make this uh, line um, right in the middle of my of my circle here, kind of directly horizontal. Um, and when I said the words directly horizontal, maybe your head went to the same place that mine did, and then said that hey, there's a co there's a constraint called horizontal horizontal slash vertical. And if I choose to give that constraint to that line, it makes it straight horizontal. And also, now I am now that my sketch is fully constrained here, now I can add in my arc. So I'm going to go ahead and add my three-point arc because um, if I'm looking like right down the shaft of my screwdriver, you can see it's just a nice little nice little arc in there and I went and measured it as 3 eighths of an inch so I'm just going to click on one point click on the other point and I'm just going to place my arc somewhere in here-ish now the same way that I chose to uh, give a radius to that first arc that I made I'm going to choose to give a radius to this arc as well. So just to fully constrain it, I'm going to go ahead and uh, create 
a sketch dimension and I'm going to specify that arc as the thing that I'm dimensioning and this is close to a quarter of an inch um, so I'm going to make it a quarter of an inch um, now just as a, a last little detail here uh, I'm going to eventually extrude this shape to cut away uh, down the length of my shaft here um, and when I do that I'm going to have to click on both of these segments um, because my shape is being bisected by this line that I made I can save myself a click if I choose this line here so you can see if I I can click on this half and this half separately and this half separately if I choose that line if I select that line highlight it and I come over to my sketch palette I can choose to change that line type to a construction line. Oh, you make come to Yeah, you have two different lines there. Somehow you can do two different lines. Or oh, well, you can just delete one of them. there, so you can just delete that dimension. There we go. And then, I don't know, there's like a random extra point there. You could delete that point if you want to. I'm going to like zoom out and zoom in and see what else is going on up above that, that sketch there. Oh, you're good. some extra lines there, looks like. So you could hit the, hit the delete key. supposed to be the same as that one. The second piece are supposed to be the same point. Well, you can make them glitch it. So you had something selected when you chose to make something coincident. Um, so I would do Control Z. All right. So now uh, unselect everything. You don't want to have anything selected. And now you could say coincident, and you could say hey, that line, that point, and that point. There we go. Cool. Yeah, cool. 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 All right. So now that we've made that a nice little construction line. I'm going to go ahead and say finish sketch. I'm going to come up, I'm going to name my sketch. I've got this sketch called sketch two. Um, I'm going to call this my grip detail. And I am going to extrude, come up to the create menu and I'm going to extrude my grip detail little weird football shaped thing. Um, this is a, a good use of, um, instead of an extent type uh, that is set to a specific distance, we could choose an extent type that is set to all. And um, I like this option because uh, now if I say OK here, I'm indeed cutting away, so I'm cutting away that little detail. So now if I change, if for some reason uh, I, I'm saying, hey, oh, I wish my screwdriver um, was one of those cool short stubby screwdrivers that's only two inches long, um, my, my extent type of all still, still works just fine there. And if I say, oh, 
Uh, I want to have my screwdriver be one of those super long handles um, for the Jolly Green Giant. Um, the extent type of all also just still does all. All right. Now you, you might be saying, hey dude, you only drew, you didn't draw enough of those little arc things. You didn't draw enough details. Where are the rest of your handle grip details? Um, and uh, I chose, I'm choosing to do this after the fact. So there is another option here. Um, I could have in this sketch, let me just do a little brief tangent here. Um, in this sketch, I could have created a circular pattern here in this sketch. Um, there are two different ways to make a circular pattern. There's a way to make a circular pattern in a sketch. And there's the way to make a circular pattern um, out here in 3D space. If I choose to make my patterns out here in 3D space, it'll give me another icon in my feature timeline. So, we won't let you select this area. Oh, yeah, something's not connected there. So, one of those points isn't connected to the circle. That's the kitty. Yeah. So, if you edit that sketch, Uh, you may have to exit out of your extent there. Yeah. And then... You can choose your, your coincidence constraint. And then choose the point and the line. Or the circle there, maybe not. Oh, there we go. That looked like it moved to me. And now if you hover over... the for this, mm -hmm. uh, you may have to put your. There you go. Now you're good. Now you're good. All right. So after we, uh, what I was saying is uh, here, if we choose to make our circular pattern out here in 3D land, um, we're going to make a circular pattern. Oh, there's two different circular patterns that would work for this. Um, we could choose to make a circular pattern of faces and if you wanted to make a circular pattern of faces you just have to make sure you click on both of those faces. Uh, the reason I'm not going to do that is because um, if I change the radius of my little finger grip and it makes this into one face instead of two um, that this this faces option will get confused because they're supposed to be two faces and those two faces will become one face if I change things. Um, so instead of faces, I am going to choose to make a, a pattern of the object type of features. Um, and features is anything down here in our timeline. So this is our feature timeline down here in the bottom. Um, and anything in theory that appears down here, I don't think you can make a pattern of a sketch feature, um, but uh, I can make a pattern of that extrude. And I can choose an axis um, that is the same uh, as the, the circle here. Uh, I'm gonna make five. There's only four on my screwdriver here, um, but I like, I like one five better. So if I choose uh, my axis, and then I can say OK. And there we are. Here we have our screwdriver handle. Uh, we've got a shaft. Um, I'm going to skip the end point to this. Um, because we've only got five minutes left and uh, I'm not going to cram all, it all into five minutes uh, because that is not doing a service to any of you. Um, but I leave as a challenge to you uh, 
can you figure out uh, how to make a, a Phillips or a flathead? One of those two things. Uh, Phillips is weird. Um, I'm not sure if this is a, a cut that is made by a, a circular tool or if it's flat. Um, but so uh, I leave that up to your expo exploration. Um, and until next week, have fun drone stuff. Okay, Carl. Yeah. When you're done, take a look at the screen.